Welcome back to the program Ask the Ministers of God. Thank you so much and you are delighted that you are still joining us. Wow, what a conversation we are having here tonight. This is a subject that you don't want to miss out. It's actually what is trending, making headlines even in our country during these recent days. And you are talking about what are the parameters of a true church. Uh, something that maybe you've been asking yourself. Even some of the people back at home, they don't know where or maybe what to do when you're talking about which church to attend. But we're here so that we can give you the answers, we can give you the solution so you don't want uh, maybe to feel like you are lost. On set, two great servants of God, Apostle Dan Gishimo, resident minister. Thank you so much mm. for continuing to be with us. And also Bishop Philip Kamau, yes. uh, pleasure man of God, for continuing also to be with us. And of course, uh, before Thank the break, uh, Apostle uh, mm. Bishop Philip had already started giving us some of the parameters that we need to look into. Yes. And he has actually uh, pointed out to this particular major issue whereby uh, we need to consider and we need to give it a lot of priority to mm -hmm. understand that if you're looking for a true church, then Jesus should be the central theme. But apparently today there are so many of what we can call quote-unquote pastors who are the central theme in the church. What does it reflect to where we are? Well, to begin with, Magicho is very, very, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate that people have to build their faith around a somebody called a bishop, an apostle, a leveled, whatever the titles are there. Well, I'm not saying that the minister should not be respected. Right. Of course, respect is a must. Mm, sure. We must respect the ministers of God. But then, when it comes to giving Jesus the first priority in one's life, as a Christian, that is non-negotiable. -neg I love what Jesus himself spoke and said, I am the way, the truth, mm. and life. Right. The pastor is not the way, the bishop is not the way, apostle is not the way, Jesus is. And Jesus should be the central theme of every church. Mm. It's very unfortunate because some people have said they don't want to go to church anymore mm -hmm. if these are the kind of ministers. But then I would like to address those people and tell them, I'm sorry, you haven't found the right church. Find the right church. And they are there. Remnants are there. We have remnant churches mm -hmm. where Jesus is the central theme. Mm -hmm. He's the key to everything. So look for that church, go to that church. Mm -hmm. So. What I'm trying to drive at is, right. when you have a minister who focuses the congregation to himself, mm -hmm. that one is not a minister. Okay. He's something else. I don't know the right name to use. Mm -hmm. Well, if I may get angry a little bit, I will not be too angry, but a little <laughs> bit, I will be angry. I'll call him a crook. <laughs> Right. Because that's the, that's what tells if Jesus is the way, the truth and life and somebody else is, you know, becoming the central th theme instead of Christ, mm -hmm. that person can only be equivalent to the devil himself mm -hmm. because Christianity is about Christ. Sure. Christ is the one who is coming back again mm -hmm. to take us to where we are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. He's the king of kings, nobody else. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what I would like to say here is that anything that builds or anybody who tries to build the Christ, I mean the church of Christ on himself, that one actually becomes a cult. Mm -hmm. Because these cultic people, you know, they want to be seen, they want to be heard. And even when you go to some of the places, some meetings, if they are not recognized, believe you me, that is a problem. Okay. Because they want to have preeminence mm. instead of Christ. But remember what the Bible says. The Bible commands us, he should increase and he should de decrease. Right. So if you're in that kind of a church, leave it. We are not hiding people. We are speaking openly, candidly, correctly, because we want you to be in the right church mm -hmm. where you'll be taught the gospel 
and to love Christ and nobody else but Christ. <laughs> sure, thank you so much, Apostle. Uh, well put there. And, and, and the Bishop, other than uh, the, the issue of knowing and identifying Christ as a central theme, uh, there are other things that one needs to look into, especially maybe even in the conduct of services uh, in a church to determine whether it is a true church or mm -hmm. not. Thank you, Mangicho. If you look at the apostles and uh, Jesus Christ himself, when he was commissioning the apostles, the first thing he told them, remember the poor. Apostle Paul, when he was commissioned by John, uh, Peter, and, and James, he was told, remember the poor. And Paul says that is something he was practicing. In the today's church, mm. we means the poor. We rob the poor mm. instead of helping the poor. So one of the red flags you need to know that that church is not okay is when you, every time the minister is uh, ministering, he's asking for money, 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 money. And that money is revolving around that minister. Mm. It's not helping the poor. Mm. It's not helping the widows. It's not helping to expand the kingdom. This person is building himself. Any genuine minister, when mm. he takes money from the church, it will help the poor. It will expand the kingdom. It will expand all the other uh, parts of the ministry of the, of the, of the church. Mm -hmm. But every time you see money revolving around one man, mm, man, of, man of God, mm -hmm. everything man of God. I had another person speaking about uh, uh, when Jesus was ministering and somebody broke the ceiling to bring the sick person. You know that person, uh, how they reacted to that scripture? And Jesus say, uh, they say Jesus was not scared because he had money to repair the, the ceiling. These people, even if they bring Ephesians, <laughs> they will end in money. They bring Matthew, <laughs> they end speaking about money. So one of the red flags is when money mm -hmm. is abused and goes to one person mm -hmm. but not expanding the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Every time you, you are in the church, and you hear the widows are considered, mm. the orphans, mm. and the less fortunate, mm. then that you know that's a, a, a genuine church. Mm. But when money comes to only one man, mm. every time he preaches in Ephesians, man of God, anything, man of God, no. Mm. That is a red flag. Mm. Wow. The church should help the poor. Mm. That is, should, that's one of the parameters mm. of a, a yeah. genuine church. Mm. You know, the church is speaking about helping the poor, how they can expand the kingdom, mm -hmm. but not building ones. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, maybe just to add to what Bishop has said. He's supposed to. You know, the church is supposed to be holistic. Okay. In other words, we have this church here under the leadership of Bishop Philip. Mm. You know, it should be holistic. What does that mean? You know, on the spiritual matters, the church is okay. Now, when it comes to the community around also, the church is relevant. Sure. Like, for example, we have the poor people. We have people with various diverse needs. You know, what can the church do about mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. And, in fact, we can even see this from Christ himself. Just look at Jesus Christ himself when he preached to people. You know, that is a spiritual angle. He preached to people about the kingdom of God. And then after that, instead of sending people home, you know, he was concerned about their welfare. Mm. And these people were going to faint on the way, and he said it. So what did he do? He performed a miracle to give them bread. So Jesus was holistic okay. in his approach. Mm. Paul was holistic also in his approach, mm. and all the apostles were the same. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when Bishop uh, was just talking about Paul, you know, and then Paul, it is in the book of Hebrews, where it says that, uh, of course, some theologians say that the book of Hebrews was written by Paul, but I remember in the book of Hebrews, which says that true religion is looking after the orphans okay. and the widows. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? A church cannot shut its eyes mm -hmm. to the needy people the needy. because sure. they are there, they are God's people, they must be looked after. Mm -hmm. And thank God for those ministries that mm -hmm. have been taking care of the street children mm -hmm. and orphans. Mm -hmm. God bless you. <laughs> You've been doing the right thing. Keep it up. <laughs> sure. Bishop, because uh, that is also a hot potato subject when it comes to the issue of money. Your critics would argue that the body of Christ is supposed to be blessed. It means very well 
maybe for a Christian and also maybe for a man of God uh, to actually do well, both spiritually and materially. So where do you draw the line between exploitation and I, the blessings I, from God? I agree in this with time? them hundred percent. The men of God, the body of Christ, the ministers of the gospel should be to be maintained well and to be uh, good people. Yeah, good because it is also a scripture. Yeah? Yes, it's scripture. Mm -hmm. But there is a portion of the scripture. When Jesus sent uh, Saint Peter, uh, mm -hmm. when they were asking about the taxes, mm -hmm. and Peter was sent to the sea to get some fish, and he got uh, a shekel, uh, uh, a shekel mm -hmm. and he was told by, by Jesus, half will be yours and half will be mine. Mm -hmm. So when you get money from the church, there must be a dividing line. Half should go to Christ to expand his kingdom, and half should come to you. As a minister today, I can drive one of, one of the best cars, but I make sure the kingdom is expanding the other corner. Okay. Yes, not driving a good car, and you see somebody driving a good car, and the sanctuary is in shambles. We need to divine the line that Jesus should get half, and you, minister of the gospel, should get half. <laughs> yes, so you should expand the kingdom and you should expand your, your territory. Yeah. That's the Bible. Wow. Yes. Okay. So you not be building yourself. Mm -hmm. You must build the kingdom and also build yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But so saying I don't believe that men of God should be poor. They should not be poor. But they should make sure even when they are making money, they are building, expanding the kingdom. That is the half part of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, maybe even to add to that, Apostle, maybe, yeah. how do you uh, respond uh, to, to, to the issue of maybe even some of these ministers uh, attributing maybe to those who are needy and maybe those who are less fortunate and maybe, maybe claiming it is because of maybe not giving or maybe not uh, bringing their money to charge that has made them to be in their status? Well, in most of these complainants, because, you know, they are there and they have been complaining, in most cases, if the teachings are not done properly, the Christian doctrine about giving, if it is not taught properly, this can be a hindrance to people actually responding to giving. Number two, if when the church gives, they don't see what is happening in God's kingdom. Again, people can shy away from doing what? Mm. From giving. Because the moment people understand what giving is all about, and I'm saying so, and I'm not blowing my trumpet, because this is something that I've been practicing over the years. Mm -hmm. Because why? I do it with the understanding. Mm -hmm. So the moment people are made to understand what it all entails. Mm. Believe you me, people will give. Mm. Because of course there are people that have been consistent in their giving. Yeah. And we can see of course among the churches that we have in our nation, there are some churches that are doing very well mm. when it comes to giving. But, and if you look at those churches, they have schools, for example. They look after orphans. They look after widows. They do things. Mm. You know, they are there. Right. Those right. churches are there. They're there. And therefore, mm -hmm. what I would say in a nutshell is mm -hmm. let people understand giving mm -hmm. and let the ministers put that money in the light perspective. Wow. Use the money wisely mm -hmm. and use the money according to the scriptures mm -hmm. because you will also be held accountable by God mm -hmm. for every penny. Yes that you divert in the long place, you'll give an account for it. That is for sure. <laughs> exactly. We've run short of time, but of course, there, there's still a lot more. And therefore, our view, you have to look out and watch out for part two of this particular discussion. Uh, we, we, we even tackled the issue of theatrics, entertainment. Also. Yes, yes. Uh, they're quite uh, Too many yes. in the church yeah. today. Okay? Yes. Uh, we have the selling of holy water, handkerchiefs, yes. uh, anointing oil. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all that <laughs> stuff, Bishop, I think. <laughs> we will have to have another discussion on you, but because of time, uh, allow us to bring it to a stop at this particular point. Thank you so much for your contribution, for your participation. Our great panel tonight, Apostle Dan Gishemu, thank you so much. Uh, more grace even as we continue to shed more light on uh, these uh, weighty matters. It's also been a pleasure having you, man of God, Bishop Philip Kamau, on this particular <coughs> set tonight. Until we do it again next week at a time like this, have a blessed evening and enjoy the rest of your viewing. On behalf of the entire crew, my name is Mangicho Mola.
Nuggets of Wisdom with Apostle Dan Gishimo. Don't waste your life by living carelessly because the cost of such is too high and will place you in the platform of pain that may be difficult to find cure. Committing your life to Christ is being careful as well as living a life of gain.